By far the most common question I get on any of my videos that have to do with home assistant voice or LLMs is, am I running the LLM locally? And if so, how am I doing it? Well, I can finally say yes to that question and I'm excited to share how it all works. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my whole LLM setup that I've got running on a Mac Mini M4, running Olama, and how I've got it integrated with Home Assistant, and even a fun WLED animation that visualizes how hard the LLM is working at any given moment. And definitely stick around to the end. I give a sneak peek on how I'm running my own ChatGPT-like server locally called Open Web UI. All right, so let's quickly go over everything I've got running here, including all the components in case you want to try something like this yourself. For hardware, as I said, I've chosen a Mac Mini M4 Pro. One of the reasons why Apple Silicon works so well for local LLMs is because of its unified memory architecture. Large language models run best on GPUs and on Windows machines with Nvidia cards, you're limited by your GPU's VRAM. With Apple's unified memory, the GPU and CPU share a common memory pool giving the models much more headroom and flexibility. It's actually a pretty compelling setup dollar for dollar when you compare it to other compact devices in the same performance class. For the software side, I'm running Olama to handle all of the models, Home Assistant for the smart home side of things, and Open Web UI for a local ChatGPT style interface for everything outside of Home Assistant. For the specific models I'm running, for now, I'll just say that there have been two that have been standouts for me in Home Assistant, but more on models in a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at how this works in real time. Here's Home Assistant voice running on a PE. No cloud, no third party processing, just a fast local response. I'm not gonna speed this up, up at all. It's gonna be real time. This battery pack is dead. All right, let's try this again. Lorelei, what's the weather like? The weather today is cloudy with a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 69% humidity. This will be even snappier once real-time LLM sentence streaming comes to a llama in Home Assistant. What makes my local LLM setup both fast and reliable despite running on relatively modest hardware is a strategy I call cached responses. Instead of exposing a huge amount of entities and asking the LLM to reason through them in real time, I've started leaning on Home Assistant scripts and predefined pathways to simplify its job. This lets me delegate heavier, more complex processing to slower but smarter models running in the background, while a lightweight model handles real-time voice interactions and simply pulls the pre-compiled answers, or at least can grab those pre-compiled answers and create the response that it needs from that small piece of data, rather than again trying to reason through potentially hundreds of exposed entities. A good example is weather. One of the most common things we ask around the house is, what's the weather like tomorrow? Or what's the humidity outside? There's really no need to reprocess all of that information every time. So I have a larger model generate a clean spoken weather summary every hour. That result gets cached and is instantly available to any smaller model to serve up. It's a similar idea to what we're seeing across the LLM landscape. Multiple agents or models, each with their own strengths, collaborating to deliver fast, useful results. And of course, I needed to involve a WLED in some way. I found this incredibly beautiful pre-built animation in WLED called SOAP. And I've got the speed of that animation automated to parallel the current power draw of the Mac Mini. And one of the nice things about the animation is that it's got easing built into it. So as the LLM ramps up, the wattage increases and the animation smoothly speeds up and comes back down when the LLM is idling. This Mac Mini is dedicated for LLM use. So the visual is pretty spot on as it's processing different tasks. And this M4 Mac Mini is incredibly efficient. When it's not processing anything, it idles at less than five watts. And even under full load, it only hits about 65 watts, but that gives me a nice range to display the animation speeds. Uh, I still can't believe that it only uses 65 watts even under full load. And that would really help keep electricity costs down when hosting your own LLM. 
especially since it idles at basically no power usage. So if you're ready to try something like this yourself, here's a quick walkthrough. Setting up a llama on a Mac is actually pretty simple. The first thing I recommend doing is setting your IP address on your Mac to a static IP address. That'll make sure that your IP address remains static so that Home Assistant and other devices can always reach it. Then you wanna head over to olama.com and go ahead and click that download button. And then once you've downloaded it, go ahead and drag Olama to the applications and go ahead and run it. Once you have Olama running, you should see a little llama icon up in the top taskbar area. When you run this for the first time, make sure to go to settings and make sure to expose Olama to the network. This is critical so that Home Assistant and other devices can use Olama. Once you have Olama running and exposed to your network, make sure that other devices on your network can reach it. So go to a different computer that is not running Olama that is connected to the same network and go to the device's IP address. In this case, my Mac Mini's IP address is 139. And then you want to go to port 11434. And this is the response you should see if Olama is indeed running. Olama is running. Now to test that everything is truly working well and LLMs can actually run, go to the device running Olama and open terminal. Once terminal is open, you can run a simple command like Olama run quen 3 3 billion verbose. Now what this is going to do is it's going to download the quen 3 model, the 3 billion parameter, and by putting the verbose flag at the end, it will actually give you a readout on how many tokens per second you used and some other statistics which can help determine how performant the model is. Now it's telling me that this doesn't exist, uh, so this is a good moment to demonstrate how you can use olama.com to find models. So head over to olama.com, go to models, and go over to Quen3. And the reason why Quen3 3, 3 billion didn't work is because it doesn't exist. So let's try something that actually does exist, like the Quen. 4B, which I actually already have installed, so it won't actually install it for me right now, but you can see that this model is 2.6 gigabytes in size, so it'll download that entire 2.6 gigabyte model the first time you run it. So go ahead and click on the model that you want to install and run, and then this is your command right here. Paste that into terminal. I'm going to add the verbose tag or flag, I should say. And now you can start talking to the LLM right within the terminal window. So now this is a model that actually thinks before it spits back the final response. And this what is E is a prompt that I just use to test models. It's pretty broad and challenges the model to reason through the question. And this is moving pretty quickly. Now we can see that the evaluation rate, which is pretty much the one that I used more than anything else, uh, was about 50 tokens per second, which in my opinion would be usable within Home Assistant. I think anything above 10 tokens per second is technically fast enough to be usable, but for Home Assistant voice, I think 50 tokens per second is the absolute minimum, preferably it should be more than that. Now let's look at a model that's much larger, like DeepSeek 32 billion parameters. This is a pretty large model and also very capable. I already have it installed, so we can jump right into testing. And you'll see it's quite a bit slower than the other models. Even loading this into the memory takes a bit of time. So we're gonna try that same prompt, see what we get. It's outputting 
basically as fast as I can read, which in my opinion is still usable for certain tasks that you need that horsepower. I found that 32 billion parameter models seem to be the threshold for this Mac Mini M4 with it being usable speed. And there we go. We have about 10 tokens per second, a little bit under that, which again, I think is usable as a traditional LLM, but not so much in Home Assistant, a little bit too slow. One of the most important things to keep in mind when looking for models for Home Assistant is that they need to be able to use tools. Fortunately, Olama includes a filter which allows us to just see the models that have tool capabilities. At the time of recording this, my favorite model for Home Assistant is Quen 3. And depending upon what hardware you're running, either their 4 billion or 8 billion parameter model works okay. Obviously, the 8 billion parameter model is smarter than the 4 billion parameter model, but you have to try to strike that balance between speed and performance or accuracy. I've also seen others on Reddit saying that they've had success with the Llama models in this version of Home Assistant, which is currently 2025.7.2. I get errors when I use these models, but Quen and Mistral have been pretty great so far. So to get moving, I recommend installing a Quen model. Try that first with Home Assistant. And now let's move over to Home Assistant. I already have Olama installed, but it's simple as going to add integration, typing in Olama, and then simply putting in the IP address of the device that's hosting Olama and your LLM. In this case, I put in this IP address, which is the IP address of my Mac mini, plus the port at the end, don't forget that. And then once you have this running, you can add as many conversation agents as you'd like using any of the models you have installed. For instance, I have all these different ones installed that I've been experimenting with, and I've landed on Mistral 3.224B for my heavier duty tasks that I don't need as timely of a response on. And for real-time conversations, I've gone with Quen 3. And I'd love to use the 8 billion parameter model, but for now, the 4 billion is faster, so I'm leaning on that, although once in a while it does hallucinate a little bit. And then once you have these installed, you can invoke them anytime you want, anywhere you want. So you can create specific scripts and automations which tap into specific models. Again, I think I'm moving more toward an agent-centric ecosystem where there's multiple LLMs working together rather than one really massive, super powerful LLM. Now that I'm fully invested in running my own local LLMs, I'm more curious than ever to find out how they work and how they function under the hood. That's where Brilliant comes in. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that helps you build real understanding through problem solving. One course I really like breaks down the architecture behind LLMs, how neural networks function, how transformers process information, and why these models are capable of the things that they do. What sets Brilliant apart is that you're actively engaging with the material solving puzzles, working through logic, and building intuition as you go. It's a great way to sharpen your thinking and go deeper on topics like AI, programming, and data science. Head to brilliant.org slash throttlebuilds or scan the QR code on the screen to try Brilliant for free. And if you sign up using my code, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this channel. Before we wrap up this video, I want to quickly show you Open Web UI. This is a local ChatGPT style interface that lets you interact with Olama models in a more traditional chat based format. So here is my instance of Open Web UI. And you can easily switch between installed models, run queries across different model types, and test how each one performs side by side. So as we mentioned earlier, you can see the different size models we have here, everything from larger DeepSeq models, DeepSeq 32 billion, down to some smaller models like Llama 3.2, which is only a 3 billion parameter model. So we click into that and run a query. You can see how fast it is, and it's generally not bad. Llama is a pretty well-rounded model for its size. But now if I switch over to a larger model, like let's say DeepSeq 32 billion, run the same query. Now I can compare these side by side and decide 
which one's better for the task. Now, DeepSeek is a thinking model, so it will do some interpretation, some thinking on its own before it decides on a final answer. It's kind of fun to see how it processes and thinks along the way. So as you can see, this is very similar to ChatGPT. It can search the web, it can interpret images, and this is a platform that is continuing to evolve. So more on this in future videos, but I think this is really the next step. If you've already got Olama installed, give Open Web UI a try. If you're familiar with GitHub and following some instructions, you should be able to get it off the ground. So that's gonna wrap up this video. If you wanna dig deeper and try some of these things yourself, I highly recommend checking out the description below. I've got a full write-up on straddlebuilds.com, which includes links, examples, my running list of tested models with home assistant support. So it should be a pretty good resource to help you get started. Huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And if you enjoyed this video, if you felt like it helped in any way, please consider giving it a like. It really helps me out. And if you're into this kind of stuff, local LLMs, home assistant, home automation, building, you know, privacy focused systems, definitely get subscribed. I've got a ton of videos in the works. Thanks so much. I will see you in the next one.